How's it going, Jets fans? My name is Alex and my co-host here, Ryan Moran. And guess what? We want to talk about Brees Hall. This is my favorite, one of my favorite players, my top running back in the 2022 draft class. And Brees Hall is capable of being a bell cow workhorse running back in the NFL. The Jets got an absolute steal, guys. If you're a Jets fan, you should be over the moon, not only about the whole draft, but specifically about Brees Hall. The Jets landed in the second round. You know, last year you got Elijah Moore, and now you get Brees Hall, another offensive weapon. We've discussed how we think that they're going to split up the snaps between uh, Hall and uh, and Michael Carter. But, you know, that's an interesting development. We'll see kind of how they do that. I think Michael Carter has a uh, workhorse qualities and traits but i do think that he also is a really good receiver but then again Brees hall is also a really good receiver and you're going to see some of the clips that we have for you guys today um and just how talented this guy is and really what he can bring to the football field and how he's going to open up this jets offense at a level that we probably haven't seen in quite some time he has the patience of Le'Veon bell but the running style of jonathan taylor is he those running backs no he's not proven yet but he has similar traits and qualities and just physical tangibles um, that do correlate to some really great running backs at the NFL level. And with an improved offensive line, the sky's the limit for these guys. And I think, you know, Brees Hall could end up having a really stellar uh, rookie campaign. Before we dive into his kind of traits, what he brings to the table, and then dive into some film. Ryan, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing well, Alex. I appreciate it. Really excited to talk about Brees today. You said all the playmakers that Joe Douglas has surrounded Zach Wilson with, Brees Hall, Elijah Moore, Michael Carter, Garrett Wilson, Jeremy Ruckert. It's a really exciting group that's around him. And, just to see all these guys, they're so young, grow together. is going to be a ton of fun. You look at Brees as a prospect. He was highly productive his three years at Iowa State. Obviously, he's cousins with Roger Craig, you know, an all-time great running back. And he just turned 21 years old, so youth is obviously on his side. You look at just the physical and athletic attributes that Brees has. I mean, 5'11", 215, 220, guy with a ton of speed, ran a 439 explosive athlete his RIS score was in the 99th percentile so it goes to show you just the athletic ability that he can pair up with his proven production in college you know so he's big he's tall he's fast he's got that size the speed and you you touch on a couple of the needed attributes in Michael Flores you know outside zone system which Brees fits perfectly you look at just the vision and the patience that he's able to run with you know some of that power inside he can accelerate and obviously the Broken tackle stat, you know, from PFF is something that's been well documented. And it speaks to similar to Michael Carter. Brees Hall has that incredible contact balance. Obviously, it's a little bit different between MC and Brees. MC is a little bit built lower to the ground, natural leverage. And Brees is just big. He's fast. He's explosive. So, you know, it's going to be fun to see how they rotate Michael Floor with Brees and Michael. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch here starting 2022. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And just to give you guys a little bit of some background information, his combine numbers, they were fantastic, right? He did not participate in the bench press 20-yard shuttle or three-cone, but he's 89th percentile in arm length at 32 inches, 95th percentile with 10-inch hands, so he's a good receiver in that regard, uh, 93rd percentile with a 4.39 40-yard dash, 95th percentile in 40-inch vertical jump, and a 90th percentile um, with a 10 foot, six inch broad jump. The guy is 89th percentile or best in, in all of those categories. Um, you know, he's about a little bit above average in, in height and weight, and he has a good size, 5'11, 218 pounds. Um, last year, the guy was just an absolute monster once again for Iowa State. Every single year, he has been unbelievable. He has the most touches of any collegiate running back over the past two seasons. Um, he went for almost 1,500 yards last year um, on the ground. And then as a receiver, he went for 302 yards and three scores. He had 20 rushing touchdowns. So back-to-back -back years of over 20 rushing touchdowns. He had 1,572 yards in 2020 um, with two uh, receiving touchdowns, 21 touchdowns on the ground. The guy is just a, as productive as it comes for a collegiate running back, and that's like the workhorse bell cow type of style you want to see. But as we know, uh, running backs are injury prone. You know, you don't want to invest too much in the running back position. You want to supplement them. You want to, you know, take as much of the workload as off of them as possible. If you want to increase the longevity of their career, which is why having that Brees Hall, Micah Carter, one, two punch is going to provide so much value for the jets. Like you look at the Buffalo bills, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. They have some really good running backs. They got in the mid rounds there. Um, but then you have Michael Carter, a mid round pick. What was he a fourth round pick last year? And then you have um, Brees Hall, a second rounder. So some really good value um, that the Buffalo Bills also just added James Cook as well. So they have, you know, you can kind of see how they're devising that running back plan by committee, but it also increases the longevity of these players. And Brees Hall has had a lot of touches, 590 touches over the past two seasons, which is a stupendous amount of work. 
Um, and then you have to be careful about that. You know, you can't lean them on like that. The Their bodies begin to degrade after a while. So I like how the Jets are kind of taking a little bit of pressure off of him as a rookie and moving forward with Carter in the mix as well. Um, but he is an unbelievable athlete. You know, this guy at 5'11", 217 pounds, he has power, he has speed, he has leverage. Um, he ranked seventh in, in college football last year with 74 missed tackles forced. Um, you know, 175 zone attempts, right? So like, like you said, Mike LaFleur loves that outside zone scheme. And that is where he really gets a lot of the work. He's a perfect scheme fit um, for this Jets offense. You know, he has uh, 79 total rushing attempts last year going out wide beyond the gap. So, you know, Ryan, when you're looking at him as a PR prospect and all the things I just listed, you know, what is your initial impression and like how the Jets might like to utilize him as a rookie and, you know, just overall, like what you think his impact can be? 100%. So I think what's nice as well, I obviously spoke on the contact balance and the vision and the patience that both Michael and Brees have. And another element as well is that they can both contribute in the passing game, whether it be catching the football, blocking. So I think that on first and second down, primarily, you'll really see Brees, I think, more times than not. You know, maybe Carter comes in on third down. They, they mix and match, you know, in some type of way. And, you know, maybe one or two series a half. I don't, I don't really know how they would do it, but you know, giving Michael Carter maybe some first and second down work and then bringing Brees in with his receiving ability on third down, you know, these guys can be lined up out wide. So there's a lot of ways that, you know, you could really be interchangeable with both players and just the prospect that Brees is as a whole. I mean, he's really complete. Obviously you spoke on a lot of his attributes there and I think the scheme fit is perfect with the wide outside zone rushing stuff. You even see some of his inside zone, you know, work as well. So I think Brees is definitely, you know, in a great position to succeed here. Yeah, that's a fact. You know, a couple more stats before we dive into the film. Uh, 37 receptions last year. He had 251 total rushing attempts, and he had two fumbles um, in that range. So, you know, with that much workload, two fumbles, not that big of a deal. He had one drop on 37 receptions, so another, like, not a significant number there. Um, you know, I think that for a big guy, his ability to generate missed force tackles – Miss tackles force rather is damn impressive. Um, that really stands out to me. You know, as a receiver, he is one of the most difficult running backs to bring down, probably in the entire country. Unbelievable balance. He can get in and out of awkward body positions. Um, and he's used to running behind crappy offensive lines. So if you're the Jets, you're like, all right, like that's a good sign. You know, he can generate production even when our offensive line isn't playing that great. But if they are playing great, you're looking at one of the more underrated players. If you if you play fantasy football, He's a guy I would stash. You know, he's a guy that I would grab in the seventh, eighth round, eight, probably eighth, ninth rounds uh, when nobody else sees him coming. And, you know, people are going to go for Michael Carter first. But stash Brees Hall because if Carter has to miss any time, he, Hall's going to be a freaking monster for that Jets offense. He's going to get 20 touches a game and he's going to generate a touchdown and he's going to be a monster because that's what he does. He punches in those short yard of touchdowns and he's also capable of breaking through and, and making some big plays. And with that being said, let's jump into his film and take a look at what he's capable of. All right, so right off the bat here, you know, you're like I like we said, loves going out wide, and look at the lane. I mean, that's pretty good blocking for him. But I mean, he puts that defender on skates at the end there. Look at this. I mean, look at that defender coming to get him. Look at this inside jab move. Bam! He jabs and look at this dude. Ankles gone. <laughs> you see his speed initially on the beginning of the run. I mean, his ability to just kick it into a different gear. And he's got some of that shifty quickness in space as well to make guys miss. It's not just with his contact balance, defeating tackle attempts. So, Absolutely. I mean, tell me this, like you don't see a little Jonathan Taylor in him. Like you'll right. see some of these other plays. I see a lot of Jonathan Taylor in him. Like look, what, look how he maneuvers his body to make sure that this guy, 31, kind of to his left here, does not get him on that angle. And then he kind of, he kind of gets skinny, uses his blocker appropriately. Very smart, high IQ running back. I was going to say at the beginning of the rep, even like that angle he took, you could just see the feel that he's able to play with really right here. Yeah. I mean, look, what, look, look at the IQ here, right? So if you're running back, you have to see two things. One, you have to see that outside. You have to see a receiver. Look at the leverage he has. You don't want to bounce this outside because you're going to get – that guy's going to disengage. He's going to tackle you. Then you have to see number 31 here. So the only way for him to really generate the most yardage here is to squeeze on the backside of his receiver and just cut and, and make that angle as, as you know, acute as possible. 
um, for that defender to get him. And he does a great job. The defender here, you know, disengages, but he's already beyond him. There's no way he's your arm tackling Brees Hall at full speed. So really great job there. Just using his vision, football IQ to, to use angles uh, to his advantage and, and make sure he gets past that second level. And let's see here, a little, little halfback draw. This is where I see Le'Veon Bell. This is where I see Le'Veon Bell with Brees Hall. Watch his patience here. Watch him. He's looking and looking. He's looking, waiting for this, waiting for this play to develop to see where the defenders are. You see it. Look at the second level. You see the linebacker waiting at that second level, right about the 39 yard line. And watch what he does there. He looks, he jabs inside, jab, gives a little bit of a jab inside, shifts that linebacker to, to, to jump forward, and then bam, he's out. He's gone. And look how we look how he is able to change his body frame and, and, and get out and get out wide. I mean, and then use that top end speed. This is another angle. Watch what he does here. Watch how he uses his body to watch a little bit there. You see everyone's looking at him and just bam. He sees that opening on the backside and just a little counter. Bam. I mean, this is beautiful. This is what you want. This this is Jonathan Taylor-esque. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying he's Jonathan Taylor. I'm saying I see similar attributes and, and mindset in him. Uh, don't get it confused. But I just see a lot of the same things and just is able to see the back end um, see open lanes and then expose them. He doesn't hesitate, right? He bam gets a, he gets skinny. He's able to jump through those holes and, and make sure that he picks up maximum yardage. It's damn impressive. Definitely, his, his vision and just his ability laterally to move and change direction really jumps out here. And he absolutely. can explode so, in space. He can. He absolutely can. The biggest weakness that I see about Brees Hall, and he doesn't have many, is that he very rarely lowers his shoulder into contact and tries to generate yardage with that. You know, he's like a physical running back. He's very tough to bring down, but you won't see him all the time, lower his shoulder into defenders and try to like push the pile. Um, but I think that's just like bulking up, you know, changing a little bit of his mentality. I imagine, you know, the jets will need him to do that, especially on short uh, yard situations, but he's a lot more agile than he gets credit for. You know what I mean? Like he's a physical running back, but man, he is quick and he's super fast. So we'll take a take a look at some Jets some Jets clips now. Nice, he looks good in that in that green and white. I'll tell you what he does. So here you got him. He looks really good. I mean, if I was a Jets fan, I'd be picking up his jersey ASAP. He's gonna be a stud. All right, so let's jump in this here. Is a big receiving play. Big receiving play. One handed catch, right? Yep. Disengages, little quick out, bam, and then he turns it upfield. Gives his gives his quarterback a chance. This is not a design play. <laughs> right? This is not a design play. This, this defensive back is on him. His linebackers on his back, right? He's like, I'm going to give my guy a chance, turns it up field. And this is what you want to see, man. This is what playmakers do for the record. This is what playmakers do. They don't let the play die. They make, they extend plays. They give their quarterbacks a chance to make a play. And then they go out and make one headed freaking catches. You know what I mean? Like this is a guy that is going to put in maximum effort. He's not going to let the play die. He's going to give his offense a chance. This is a fourth and five, mind you. So he, they have to pick this up in the fourth quarter, and he comes up clutch. So he's got the clutch factor too. Factor that in there. Just a great catch. Not much more needs to be said. No, not at all. His, his ability Just to turn his body, adapt his technique. frame, locate the football in the air. Oh, yeah. Gets up, no big deal. Here's the ball, ref. Let's keep it going. It's that simple for me. I mean, beautiful. I mean, there's a freaking linebacker japed on him, man. This is this is gorgeous. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and he hauls it in, makes sure he gets that close to the body. I mean, the guy is a he can he can catch the ball, man. I mean, look at him. He looks so natural. Look how naturally, like I said before, right? He has 10 inch hands um, that range to the 95th percentile of running backs in this draft class. The guy can catch the freaking ball can run routes, can catch very smooth, very quick. Yeah. And I love how he's look at his concentration. A lot of times you'll see receivers turn their head before they get the ball. He watches that ball all the way into his hands and then turns his head. Nice job. Just getting that down. Absolutely beautiful. Brees Hall's a stud, man. Big, big fan of his have been for a long time. He can throw the ball too. What is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look here. This is the last clip, I believe. So let's see what else this guy can do. He's already shown us he can do a lot of different things. So again, he's going wide, cuts it back. Though. Look, look at this offensive line. They're, half of them are facing the opposite direction. 90, 54, their, right their left tackle, he's facing opposite. Their right tackle, almost facing opposite. 88, their tight end facing opposite. 64, their, le their right guard, opposite. Their center and left guard, almost facing. The this whole offensive line has been beat. 
whole offensive line has been beat. Brees Hall says no. Look, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to watch this guy play. Are you kidding me? This is this is beautiful. This is this reminds me of Saquon Barkley as a Giants fan. This is this reminds me of Saquon Barkley, you know, just making something out of nothing. The guy's just look at this. What? For a guy that big, you should not be able to move like that. His vision obviously stands out right off the bat. You know, he's able to stop, make a ton of people miss. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's yeah, quick. This guy is crazy. This guy's crazy. But you know what I like about him the most? When he makes moves, he doesn't hesitate for a second. He commits a hundred percent to every move, and his his reaction timing is unbelievable. I mean, think about the reaction timing you have. When number 13's right there in his face, and he he jukes his ass. Three guys converging on him right here. How the hell do you get out of this? <laughs> how do you how do you escape this? Bam, gone. 15 comes up, second level. Okay, that's easily should be a tackle. He puts him on skates, breaks a tackle, no problem. And watch the movie pulls here in the dirt. Bam. Look at that. Look at that jab step. I mean, right there. <sighs> Change of direction. He look at he, he puts two guys on skates. Looking like Kadarius Tony with that type of movement. Or Elijah Moore, I guess, if we're on the Jets channel. <laughs> I mean. We watched a couple of clips here. You get the picture. The guy's a stud. You know, this is a guy who's going to come and make an instant impact. He's a big body. He can pass protect. Um, you know, his power that there's some there's some left to be desired there. He's got pretty solid hands, great vision, uh, good enough speed, good agility, good burst, very well rounded uh, skill set. He's going to be an RB one for this Jets team. I honestly, I'm going to be, I'm going to go out. This might be a hot take. I think he's going to be the Jets RB one. I think Michael Carter is going to end up being RB two for him. Um, and I think he's going to be playing a third down role uh, for this Jets team. But even then, like Brees Hall can play, can play that, uh, can play on third downs. He can play first, second, and third downs. Like Michael Carter might end up becoming the backup to him straight up. Like maybe just being a supplement to, uh, maybe just go with the hot hand if there if there's a, a three minute or a two minute drill. Michael Carter might be my guy. You know what I see? I see a Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines duo situation, kind of like Brees Hall for and Michael Carter. I could see that's how they use. Uh, Michael Carter this upcoming year. Maybe you you disagree with me, but what are your thoughts on that? No, I like it. I, I think the other one I've even seen is like a Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara type of, you know, rotation where we, like you, we've obviously said here, Brees and MC can both run, catch, block. So they offer that multiplicity to keep defenses off balance. They can both play all three down. So I think overall that there will probably be a blend of, you know, Brees predominantly on first and second down, then Carter first and second down, you know, maybe a couple series they have some type of deal like that. And really just makes an imagine on third downs to keep both of these guys fresh. Yeah. I mean, I guess you just go with a hot hand approach, right? You just split the reps equally and whoever's just playing better. You just keep going with, you know what I mean? Like that simple as that. And if one guy ends up just dominating and t- instilling that starting job, so be it. That's, that's the part of competition. That's part of being an NFL athlete. Um, but so far, I am really impressed by Brees Hall. Of course, I really like Michael Carter, too. Don't get me wrong. Big fan of Michael Carter. I think he's going to be a very impactful player for this Jets squad. But Brees Hall, he's one of my favorite draft prospects from this recent draft class, and I- I'm going to stand by that. Um, I- he's a stud. The Jets got away with another really great offensive piece in the second round. They're just collecting playmakers in the second round these days. Um, so, you know, very excited for him. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you just watched – uh, some pretty exciting stuff, and you're like, damn, this guy's going to be a stud, and we agree with you. Um, pretty exciting for Brees Hall, you know, joining a team that has a revamped offensive line, young quarterback, really innovative, uh, analytically futuristic offense. So, you know, all the best to him, and hopefully he uh, he lives up to those epi- expectations because he certainly has the capabilities uh, to be a phenomenal athlete at the NFL level. So, guys, if you enjoyed this Fireside Jets episode, make sure to like and subscribe, as always. Make sure to comment below. Let us know your thoughts on this Jets offense. Brees Hall, how you think they'll split the rest between Brees and Michael Carter. Always happy to converse with you guys in the comment section below. Make sure to like, subscribe again, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode.